And two of the stars of the Garrow movie are with us now. J. Allen Christensen plays Robert Garrow, and Mark Valley plays Garrow's defense attorney. Welcome to you both. It's great to have you here. Thanks. Thank you. It's great to be here. You were both at the screening in Plattsburgh last weekend. A huge turnout. Eight, nine hundred people for the first showing. They had a second showing. You folks must have been blown away by that, by the, by the turnout and the interest. Yes. And, yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Um, not by the interest. I mean, he, he just slays it. He's really incredible as, as Robert Guerrero. It's really, it's a really an incredible piece of work. Um, I, I was just amazed to actually see um, like an independent film in a theater. So often you do films like this and they go, they stream or they go to DVD or they go somewhere else, but to actually see it in a packed theater continuously is, uh, is really quite a treat. This story is such a notorious story here in the North Country. Was, do you yeah. think that's part of the interest why so many people want to see this movie? I think so. I mean, you know, this area, you know, I mean, I don't know really what age group knows the Garrow story, but I mean, if you're really close to, you know, where he lived and, and where he grew up and where he did his damage, you know, it kind of like trickles down like folklore to the kids. And yeah, that's a good point. They, they know of him, then it becomes like this, you know, like weird ghost of a, you know, of a memory and with fear and all of that stuff around it. So the people that I had spoken to when we were in Johnstown and that had sold out like four or five theaters, I think, um, a lot of people came up to me and was like, oh, you know, my grandfather or my mother and, you know, because the story really ended when he was killed in 1978. So. Well, you grew up in the Midwest, so you probably, yeah. had you heard of the story or, or not? No, no, uh-uh, did not. But you grew up in Ogdensburg, Mark, so you, yes. in the 60s and 70s, so you you were familiar with the story. Yeah, I was familiar with it. I remember there was one, while they were looking for him, and, you know, there was a lot of state troopers around the, the interstates. But um, for me, it was a reminder of it, like late, like a couple, like a couple years before the film, I was talking to another attorney, and he had said, another attorney. I only play one on TV. <laughs> he, uh, he'd said he, we were talking about the case and you know why it was famous, and then this movie came along, and I read the book, and it was almost like, uh, oh, that was real. Like I was so young as a kid, not mm -hmm. that young, but probably your age, but it like had the power of myth or legend, where it was a bit shocking that. Oh wow! This I'm getting the details now. I just remember it as something I was afraid of as a kid. How did you prepare for the role? Jim? You know, I um, you know, just information that I could glean from Lori, from the director, and then I just kind of, you know, compiled it all together, and then, you know, went from there. But I did have a, a basic kind of a format of his upbringing and and his life, and I could just go from there. And also, the script was taking was taken uh, primarily from the actual court transcript, so it had a. The script itself had this air of um, documentation or authenticity as well, for me at least. I thought, oh, yes. this seems like something that really happened. Yeah, that, that really helped me. That. Because you, you two gentlemen have a, a number of scenes together in the movie because you being Garrow's attorney ask a lot of questions. And was that pretty accurate as far as the questions that were asked at, at the trial back in 1974? Yeah, I think it was, yeah, it was pretty much taken from the transcript. This movie goes back and really explores his abusive upbringing, and, and do you think that researching the role, do you think that, that really that had an influence on him uh, deeply? Absolutely. I mean, when I started, you know, reading a little bit about him, I was more interested in not his physical acts, but, you know, where did this come from emotionally? I mean, my first thought was, what, what was his childhood like? And then when you find out he was abused by his mother and his father, and he was sold at a very young age, um, to a neighboring family, a farm family. And, and on top of that, he slept like four hours a night. So when you were a young kid and you are sleep deprived, that is only gonna mess with you. Yeah. How was it working together? Oh, it was wonderful. I didn't really get to meet have Jay. You ever, have you ever worked together uh, professionally? No, no, not yet. I mean, I've heard, I've, you know, heard of Jay, I've seen some of his work, but it was, it was the first time I really met you where we had the longest conversation. <laughs> was probably you sitting in that wheelchair with those glasses on as Robert Garrow. So right. I kind of met you first, met him first as Robert Garrow, and then we got to know each other afterwards. I was actually given Mark's role first, and so I practiced in Los Angeles a few days with uh, Philip Kasanoff, who plays a prosecuting attorney. Mm -hmm. And so I was really getting into the role, and all this while I was thinking, God, I would love to play Garrow. That would be so fantastic. And then I get a, a text from Lori, and she said, hypothetically, what would you think of playing Garrow? And I was like, mm, I would slay it. I was thrilled. And then to find out, you know, Mark got the role of uh, Duck, um, Attorney Bell, that was even more exciting. I was like, oh my God, he's, he's perfect for it. 
So for you as an actor, how was this role? Well, I loved it because uh, I really love uh, psychology and I, I love to know what makes people tick. And I always thought that there's something really deep inside this person that makes them do that and why. And so my whole life has been kind of dedicated to that. Um, I really didn't start acting until I was in my late 30s, but I was a school teacher and did a lot of other things before that, but I always knew that you know, this is what I was meant to do. As far as uh, you know, Garrow, I had to really pull back and not judge him as this is a dark and evil person and he was born this way. And I just remember thinking as, even as a, a very young boy, you know, there's just something to this human that I'm watching and myself and my family that uh, has a driving kind of like a power in them. And wh where does that come from? How did that happen? Um, what was his driving power, Gero? Well, you know, I think, that, God, that's, such a, that's a good one. Um, I think it came from uh, this like wellspring inside of him of frustration and not really having a voice and not feeling uh, heard or acknowledged or really appreciated as a human because he was treated basically as an animal uh, when he was younger. And when you have such a, a compilation of shame and uh, degradation, uh, it has to you know, circumvent itself in some interesting way. And for him, it, it came out in power struggles and in uh, a release of energy that was so fast and furious, uh, it would end up in, in murder and killing and slaying and raping and trying to find that power and to somehow get that power that he felt he never had. Yeah, I mean, one thing I thought was interesting in the transcripts about him is that you said he was treated like an animal is that he referred to his victims as things, it, right, or I it. killed it, or I did this. We, we heard that in the yeah, movie. So right, completely, I forgot about that, that's even right. He dehumanized everything around him as well. So. Right. Yeah, when Phil was showing the photographs uh, to, to you as, as Garo, right. you, you kept referring to the victims as it. Recognize them from the large gash to the throat. And it's screened in Johnstown, that was where the premiere was in Plattsburgh now, a couple of, uh, last weekend, a couple of showings. Um, next weekend at the uh, Snowtown Film Festival in mm -hmm. Watertown. Where would you like to see it go from there? Are you, are you hopeful that uh, other theaters across the country will, will hear about it and that uh, it may get more exposure outside of upstate New York? Yeah, I mean, I think that would be that would be terrific. Um, you know, there's such a there's such a want and a need for like interesting shows like this now, and you know, Hulu and Netflix and Amazon Prime, and you know, there's so many you know ways to distribute films now and, and content. So you know, that would be fantastic to you know have some type of a streaming or or what have you, some distribution. Mark Valley, J. Allen Christensen, thank you very much for being with us. We thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, Tom. Terrific, Tom.